we need to talk about the most disgusting man in food business. As you may or may not know, fast food restaurants love slapping a face on their brand. We've got Ronald at McDonald's, the King over at Burger King, and then we have Subway's Jared. This man is currently behind bars for his crimes against children, and it's insane to me how Subway got away with promoting this man and giving him so much power for all those years. So let's talk about Subway superstar Jared Fogle. Today we're talking about Subway's most disturbing spokesperson, Jared Fogle. You guys remember Jared from Subway. He worked with the company from the years 2000 through 2015. He was featured in over 300 commercials and participated in hundreds of media appearances. Now that's how chicken should be. Subway, eat fresh. This story is so incredibly disturbing because there is so much evidence showing that Jared leveraged his power at Subway to take advantage of minors. But let's go ahead and start off by talking about where Jared came from and how he got involved with Subway. Jared Fogel was born in Indianapolis, Indiana on August 23rd, 1977. He grew up in a normal home with his father and his mother and two younger siblings, a brother and a sister. He later went on to attend Indiana University Bloomington in the year 2000 before he was introduced to Subway. Jared's first interactions with Subway started in April 1999 because an article was posted in the Indiana Daily Student. It was written by his former doormate who wrote that Jared Fogel lost 245 pounds by exercising and eating a diet of Subway sandwiches. Later that year, Jared was featured in Men's Health magazine in an article titled Stupid Diets That Work, and at that point he attributed his weight loss to eating Subway sandwiches. When a Chicago-based Subway franchise learned of Jared's story, they decided to take it to corporate, and Subway was interested in marketing his story. So the company decided to do a test run, and they put out their first Subway Jared commercial on January 1st, 2000, and it was an instant success. At the heart of Jared's routine are Subway sandwiches. Hey, Jared. Hey, guys. At Subway, you can choose from seven sandwiches with six grams of fat or less, and they all taste great. Food for thought. Subway, it's the way a sandwich should be. Subway was sold on using Jared's story as a marketing tactic, and after that first commercial, he was booked for hundreds more. Then he started appearing in person at Subway locations, and he was an instant celebrity. I find it so interesting how Jared was a cultural phenomenon. He was a real-life fast food celebrity, and people were obsessed with his story. I mean, at one point, his famous pair of jeans were featured in a museum, but his celebrity didn't last long because his poor choices and disgusting actions finally caught up with him in 2015. This woman, Rochelle, has been credited with taking down Jared from Subway. She worked with the FBI for five years to collect evidence against Jared. Rochelle is actually a former journalist and radio host. She met Jared in 2000 because they were both at a middle school health event. And at that point, she had a conversation with Jared that she found incredibly concerning. She made recordings of Jared's remarks and she kept text messages between them and she decided to go to the FBI and report them. At that point, the FBI I worked with Rochelle to collect evidence against Jared. So Rochelle spent five years collecting recordings and text messages. Here's actually one recording where Jared admits that he likes all types of children. I like all ages. That's the thing. I, mean, I like all of them, you know? Well, what makes it different? I mean, from one age to another, why does... Well, it just depends which, who's ready for what. And, you know, who's going to give you the glance, you know what I mean? These recordings are absolutely sick. I mean, he was referring to a glance that I guess a minor child would give to him that would give him the okay signal to go and prey on them. And it's not that hard, Jared said. He actually told Rochelle in one recording that it's not that hard to get these minors and it's disgusting how comfortable he is talking about it. So just sharing stories and then, you know, we get a little closer and a little closer. 
kind of want to cluster and before you know it, you know, it's, you know, it's just, it's just starts to happen. So it's not that hard to do? No, not at all. Rochelle was determined to put Jared behind bars. She collected all of these recordings, but at one point she did reach her breaking point because literally Jared started preying on her own children. She has a son and a daughter, and he was asking her which room should he put a webcam in because he was trying to creep on her children. Listen to that conversation. After amassing five years worth of recordings, Herman Walren finally reached her breaking point when Fogel mentioned her two young children. What if we put a camera in your kids' room? Would they be okay with that? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Would you rather have in your son or your daughter's room? Oh, I don't know. That would be, you know... Which one do you think would be better? I don't know. Can you tell me? I can't even begin to imagine what Rochelle must have been thinking to hear this man talk to her on the phone about going and trying to get or, you know, exploit her minor children. But actually, the whole investigation into Jared didn't start with Rochelle because Jared did pop up on investigators radar because one of his business partners was already being investigated for CP, which I can't really say the word on YouTube. It's child PO. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, obviously, something really devastating and heartbreaking and something that Jared and his business partners were really invested in. This man's name is Russell Taylor, and he's actually the executive director of Jared's Foundation, which was founded in 2004. So Subway literally gave Jared Fogel his own charity foundation, and this man was helping him run it. Jared's Foundation was a nonprofit that helps children deal with childhood obesity. Obesity, and Russell Taylor was one of those key players. This man, Russell Taylor, is one of the worst men out here because not only did he distribute CP, but he created it in his own home. And actually, when the FBI and investigators got a hold of his technology, they found that this man was sending content to Jared Fogle. I was reading through some of the court filings and it looks like Russell Taylor actually created this CP in his home using secret cameras between the years of March 2011 and April 2015. This man exploited children as young as six years old and they found that there was a strong connection between him and Jared Bogle. So with the information that authorities have from Rochelle and from Russell Taylor's case, they decided to go and raid Jared Bogle home on July 7th, 2015. A team I'm told is called the Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force has been investigating for nearly six hours here outside of Subway spokesman Jared Fogel's home here in Zionsville. Now, uh, I've watched as the force has taken several items from out of the Subway spokesman's home and dropped them off in their mobile lab, a big white trailer parked right out in front of the Fogel's home here. Uh, and I'm told that unit's outfitted with all of the latest technology so that they're able to analyze anything they might see inside the home, whether it's a laptop, USB, you name it. Analyze it right here, right now on the scene without having to leave. Now, with that being said, another interesting thing that I've seen out here is uh, agents lead a Labrador, a dog, yes, into Jared's home, into Jared Fogel's home. And I'm told that lab is an electronic sniffing dog, one who state police tell us is just one of three in the entire nation with the kind of training he has. I'm told that dog is able to sniff out uh, electronics and, and find uh, sensitive things that they think might be useful to them in their investigation. The police confiscated computers and other electronics from the home. And on that same day, Subway announced that they talked to Jared and they mutually agreed to suspend his partnership, which I feel like uh, mutually agreed. Subway should have been like, oh, hell no, you're fired. But that same day, they did remove all their references to Jared from their website. But I mean, you already did so much damage by plastering him all over the place that I believe that Subway will always be associated with Jared. Jared. But let's talk about that day on July 7th, 2015, because when prosecutors went into the home, they actually found that Jared had two images of children on his phone that he received from Russell Taylor. 
And after weeks of reviewing the data from Jared's devices, the government actually stressed how unusually close and direct Jared was to his victims. Because typically when you, I guess, like, you know, you get CP, which is so disgusting. When you, like, receive it, you usually don't know where it came from or who it was. But Jared knew who his victims were, and he was unusually close and direct to them, which makes this so much more scary because he had intimate knowledge of his victims and and the entire process by which their victimization occurred. But that wasn't it, because the government found more evidence against Jared. Actually, he sent some inappropriate text messages to a woman named Cindy Mills in 2008, and the government subpoenaed her for those messages. And it revealed that Jared would actually speak to um, uh, women who, you know, you know, work on the street. I can't say like the actual term, but like SW, um, he would, you know, he would get into contact with these women who worked on the streets and, you know, you know, made their money that way. And he would coerce them into finding someone younger. Like, okay, I'll pay you $300 and a 14 year old $300 if you can get me one. Here are some of those text messages, and what I find really damning about this situation is that Cindy actually did contact Subway when she got these messages from Jared, but they didn't do anything because he wasn't technically a Subway employee, so he wasn't in violation of any of their rules. But as you guys can read here if you want to pause, I'm going to have to blank out some words, but he is asking this woman to go and find him a 14 or 15 year old and that he's going to pay big for one of those younger children. It even looks like he was trying to get to this woman's cousin who was 15 at the time. He said, if she's good looking, I would give you 300 and the same, which is so incredibly sick. How, uh, oh my God, just how this man operated. I don't quite understand how Jared was just going out here and operating like this, acting like he was untouchable because he's like a subway celebrity. Are you serious? But thank God he was caught and he was held accountable. Even if it was a little too late, he got some big charges thrown at him. On August 19th, 2015, they came to an agreement, a plea deal, where he was going to plead guilty to these charges and he had to pay these victims a lot of money. So Jared was sentenced to 15 years and 8 months in prison, and he's not eligible for early release until he's served at least 13 years. He was ordered to pay $1.4 million in restitution to 14 victims. And on top of that, he had $500,000 in fines. What's really disturbing is that Jared actually has two kids of his own with his wife, Katie, who actually filed for divorce against him. His family was also really shocked at learning all of this. They had no idea that Jared had all of these problems. So everyone denounced his behavior and it looks like his wife left him and his kids are just not going to have a father because he decided he was more into kids than raising his own. I would like to mention that Jared's ex-wife actually ended up suing Subway in 2016. She claims that they knew that he was a criminal and they did nothing about it. Obviously, she was not happy to find out that her husband was this raging criminal, and she was quoted saying, Finding out your husband and the father of your children is a child p-word, and knowing that his job involved visiting schools on a regular basis is devastating. She also claims that Subway used their children and her likeness in a campaign that she did not consent to. It's clear that she's really frustrated with Subway's lack of action and accountability. I find it a little bit disturbing how Subway is so dismissive of everything. I mean, they put out this statement that Jared Fogel's actions are inexcusable and do not represent our brand's values. We had already ended our relationship with Jared. So they put out these statements, but nothing was ever like that long or that serious. And I feel like if you're a brand that promoted this like criminal and gave him access to power to, you know, taking advantage of these like minors, you should put more than just a two sentence statement out. At the end of the day, the damage is done. And honestly, I will never look at Subway the same because I was around where, you know, Jared was all over the place and he was the face of Subway. And the fact that he did all of these things to 14 victims, and those are the, the ones that we know about. I'm sure there are more out there. It's incredibly inexcusable and Subway needed to do better. I mean, are you not going to go and background check these people? And when Cindy Mills tried to come and bring this up to you in 2008, what happened? 
moment, they ignored her because he wasn't a Subway employee. I guess because he's contracted out, but like, still morals here but i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below honestly any fast food restaurant should probably use like um an animated character like i know chick-fil-a has a cow like honestly maybe you should just go and like put a cow up on there because uh that cow is not going to go and violate these minors but jared will so i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below i was really excited to talk about this just because i grew up hearing about this man and i never knew how bad this story was he's way worse than i actually thought he was and this man should be locked up for a very long time. If you guys have any other video ideas for me, here is my email below. Let's go ahead and open this P.O. Box package from Ashley Bailey. Um, looks like she's from the United States, actually pretty close to where I'm at. And if you guys ever have any small businesses or anything, you want me to give you a little shout out in the video. You guys know that I grew up with my, um, my parents have a small business and um, that's how like I survived as a kid. So I am really appreciative of small businesses, and I love how many of you guys are business owners out here. So I don't know if this is a business or not, but I'm just stating that because you guys know how it goes. Oh my gosh, how am I going to get this open? Oh wait, here we go. Ooh, here we go. I'm not exactly sure what's going on in here. So we've got this right here, and then we've got the letter. Yes. Hi Sloan, I'm Ashley, owner of Trippy Hippie Crystals. Hope you love everything. I watch your videos, and I love your channel and what you represent. Oh, thank you so much. And it looks like she sent me some necklace, some uh, tumble thing. Let's go ahead and check it out. And she wrote, hashtag free Britney. So um, it looks like she sent me this handful of crystals right here. So this looks like it's like kind of like a variety pack with, um, it looks like with some dried like herbs in it. I don't want to like spill them everywhere, but like, oh my gosh, so pretty. Oh, they're so pretty. I love this one right here. <gasps> little cute little crystals. Aw. Honestly, when it comes to charging crystals, do you charge little ones? I don't really understand that. Like how, like how little is too little to not charge? Or do you charge them all at once? Honestly, I need a tutorial when it comes to that. So, um, definitely let me know because my crystals need charging and oh my gosh, they're so pretty. Like, you can't really see because it's smaller, but I love that. And it looks like right here, she sent me a necklace. Again, everything's gonna be listed below her entire shop, so definitely go check it out. Oh, it's so pretty. This is like the black, Um, I can never say it, but the black uh, torn, tourmaline, tourmaline. Oh, so nice. Oh, I'm gonna wear this in my next video. Thank you. Oh, I love that. And then she sent me this right here, which I don't know what's going on here. It looks like you can't really see anything in it, but I think there's something in there, so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see what's going on in here. Also, guys, I am coming out with a podcast soon. I don't know if this video will be out by that point, but um, it's a Free Britney related one. That's why I want to mention it because she brought up Free Britney here. And let's see what's going on in here. I don't want to break it. I'm kind of worried. Like, what is in here? Okay, let's see. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. And these are some really pretty. Cr Whoa. Look at this rock. Look how green it is. <gasps> I don't even know what this is oh my gosh and then this is so beautiful it looks like a crystal that has like literally pieces of hay in it like i don't know what to call that but that's so pretty and then this one right here wow oh my gosh these are gorgeous and this one the color is like so beautiful so thank you so much i love these definitely go and check out her shop i really appreciate them they're so cool i can't wait to wear this necklace too ah so go and check it out and i will see you guys in a new video soon bye guys